welcome to the numerical sheep and offshore hydrodynamics. Uh, today is the uh, our lecture 6 and today we are going to discuss this uh, following concepts. We discuss about the force oscillation motion and, and also we discuss that how to get the added mass damping uh, through, through some experiment and also we are going to discuss something on the heap motion. Okay. So, uh, and also uh, this is the keyword that we are going to use uh, to get this lecture. Okay. So, let us uh, get back to the some board work. Now, this is where actually uh, we finished in the last lecture and what we are going to discuss is that at which frequency we should get that uh, we, we could have the maximum response right. In order to, in order to find that, so first we need to uh, write let us write the equation of motion and try to find out like how we can guess it. So, we write a m uh, plus a into x double dot and plus b into x dot plus c x equals to f x at infinity. So, this is the fundamental equation right. Now, what let us do one thing let, let us do the you know the free vibration problem. So, we make this right hand side equal to 0 and also we can drop the, the damping term. So, let us make this goes to 0. So, then what we have then we have a very simple equation m plus a into x double dot plus c x equal to 0 and so therefore, we have here just divide both the side m plus a. So, x double dot plus c divided by m plus a into x equal to 0 and you know that this is nothing but your the natural frequency right. So, then we can define your natural frequency as omega z. So, we can we know that this omega z square is nothing but c divided by m plus a. So, from here we can get my omega z equal to square root of c divided by m plus a. So, you know that is a, is a, is a, is a very common thing right everybody knows. Now, uh, similar then we can find out my time period nothing but you know 2 pi divided by m plus a by c. Now, this is actually very important for us right. So, now let us let us go ahead with this uh, the expression right. So, we write this omega z is nothing but the restoring coefficient c divided by mass plus added mass right. Now, you see like uh, now suppose you have a you know frequency of encounter like or, or that frequency of the uh, oscillation of the forcing function is omega and this is of course, your the natural frequency omega z. So, therefore, if the both are actually you know uh, uh, morely close to each other right. So, at that time you can expect that there is a large response right. So, now you see before actually we uh, started doing the hydrodynamics we can guess so many things right. Uh, because if we if we have the idea about the restoring coefficient c, if we have some idea about the added mass a, and then then actually mass of course is, is we know that the mass of the body, so then we can actually approximate the natural frequency of the particular vessel, and therefore in normal I mean this is very important for the engineer right? Uh, they don't I mean that those who are working in the field they don't have time to do some fancy mathematics or do some simulation to find out the responses all the time right. However, for very simple estimation of the c the added mass a they can actually get some kind of idea about the natural frequency and then you know that helps for the design right. Okay. Now, uh, this is this is something about the, the free vibration. So, now let us uh, let us do the force vibration problem.
Now, you know people uh, when you use the, the vibration always they assume is a high frequency phenomena. So, people do not use it such as so they can oscillation instead of say right oscillation. However, you can use anything that you like. Okay, both are same. So, now uh, let me do some modification uh, to do this not modification just rewriting the things it, it be little bit simpler way. So, we are we know that this is my the classical equation of motion. So, we are using like a bread and butter for you. So, you have to remember it you can afford to uh, forget this. So, now you just write f a e to the power minus i omega t this is the forcing function right. And then let us make some kind of simplification not simplification I say that nomenclature you can call m plus a equals is equal to a and then let us define uh, some, some term um, let us say mu equal to you know uh, or or okay, let us take uh, capital B equal to small b okay, and then capital C equal to small c and then you can define mu is equal to b divided by let us say 2 a not mu uh, let us say nu. So, so then okay, so that means that b by a equal to 2 nu okay. let us assume this and then let us uh, try to apply all this thing in this into this equation right. So, if you do that then you have you know very simplified form it becomes a x double dot plus b x dot plus c x is equal to f a e to the power minus i omega t. So, I def, divide the, the everything by a. So, I will get x double dot plus b by a into x dot plus c x is equal to f by a and divided by a into e to the power minus i omega t. And now I just simply uh, write it b by a, I just write 2 nu x dot. Now, the c actually you can see that oh, okay, so I just forget this is c by a. Now, you know that that c by a is nothing but omega z square which is the square natural. So, we just we, we have just found out right. So, instead of c by a we can write it is omega z square into x is equal to f a by uh, a right ok. Oh, I forgot that e to the power minus i omega t of course is important. Now, if again as I said that we can assume my uh, the response also harmonics we can assume x equal to e to the power or with some xi a e to the power minus i omega t and then we just going to substitute over here. So, let us see what we get, we get minus omega square into xi a right plus i 2 nu omega into xi a plus omega z square into xi a is equal to f a by a right. And then just uh, okay, if it is minus i omega t, okay, so then definitely this is minus. Okay. And so therefore, you can find out it is omega z square minus omega square, okay, and minus i two nu into omega, and whole multiplied by z a is equal to f a divided by a right. Now, I just do little bit more modification I just divide everything by omega z square now. So, then what I get is 1 minus omega square by omega z square minus 2 into now nu by omega z and you can write omega by omega z into xi a equal to f a by a. 
Now, remember this omega z square is equal to c by a. So, I just multiply this c by a. So, a a will cancel out right and then we have f a by c. Now, uh, you know why I do all this exercise because uh, I need again uh, uh, you know another nomenclature. So, let us do omega by omega z let us call this you know gamma and then you can call that uh, nu by omega z you can call something called kappa right. Now, what we are going to do is uh, let us substitute everything uh, back to there ok. Let us see what happens. Then we have 1 minus gamma square right that is we are getting and then we have 2 into k into gamma. So, minus 2 i into kappa into gamma multiplied by xi a is equal to here you can say this is equals to f a divided by my c right. Now, you see it is a very nice equation that we are getting. So, finally, you are finding out my xi a is equals to f a by c multiplied by 1 upon just 1 minus gamma square minus 2 i k into gamma. Now, how to get the uh, so now I just do some little bit more manipulation I just uh, write the complex conjugate. So, I just find out f a by c then it is 1 minus gamma square plus 2 i k gamma divided by 1 minus gamma square whole square uh, plus 4 k square into gamma square right that we are going to get. So, I just break into real and imaginary part. So, it will become 1 minus gamma square divided by 1 minus gamma square plus 4 k square gamma square plus i into f a by c into 2 gamma k divided by 1 minus gamma square plus 4 k square into gamma square fine clear now now this part is actually algebra so we can find out the modulus and also you can do the the tan inverse v by a you can get the amplitude as well as the phase right so uh, let us find out what is the amplitude so then you can get this xi a equal to modulus of f a by c and then if you do that it turns out to be uh, 1 divided by because a square plus b square square root. Now, you have the whole square term over here whole square term over here you can you can work out right it, it turns out to be square root of 1 minus gamma square whole square plus 4 k square gamma square. So, uh, again we can use further uh, you know um, uh, notation. So, again we can use this sum equal to it is f a by c and you can call this as you know some mu z where this mu z equal to 1 divided by square root of 1 minus gamma square plus 4 k square to gamma square. Now, it has all name like uh, you know you can you can you can find out there is a uh, different name for all these things like it is called the tuning factor, amplification factor all these things, but we are not that interested we just try to find out the phenomena some phenomena right and of course, you can just you can work out how to get the phase ok. Now, what is my interest over here why I derive this. I just trying to plot the 
one thing which is uh, the mu z which is essentially the, the response divided by the tuning factor gamma which is essentially that omega divided by omega z right. Now, here in this location if you put this this gamma tending to 1 then you can see here it goes up to infinity. Now, if you put gamma equal to 0 right then actually you can see that that mu z equals to 1. So, mu z can be you know you can say that mu z basically the response with respect to this. Now, you can see that at this equal to 1 that means, when this this forcing I mean frequency of the forcing function equals to the natural time period it goes up shoots up to infinity. And again very quickly it comes down and it goes to 0 because when the gamma tending to uh, infinity this goes to 1 right. So, gamma means this when the omega tending to infinity it goes to 1. So, you can see that uh, how important it is uh, to find out the natural frequency right. So, we can now you can assume the no damping of course, like if you have used some damping it might come down of course. So, but our idea to show all these things just to show you that at when this natural frequency equals to the forcing the frequency of the forcing function uh, there is a huge response you can expect even if you put some damping definitely you can ignore this point. And also you can see that when omega tending to 0 when omega tending to 0 okay, let me just write this bigger so that you can get it when omega tending to 0 you can see the response goes to 1. Now, let us see what happened that time. So, that means the mu z equals to 1. So, in that case you can see my response xi a is equal to basically the ratio between the hydrostatics and the amplitude of the exciting uh, force. Now, you see it is very important thing like you know you see that is what happening actually when you are uh, you know going in the beach and you are just. Uh, finding out the uh, that your response is you are moving up uh, with uh, the wave and moving down with the wave and if you calculate the phase also you can find at that particular moment when this this omega tending to 0 at this particular moment this phase also goes to 0. It means that when you are in top okay. And then this is exactly what is happening in the low frequency region, right? Okay, so that means there is no phase, first of all, and second, you are moving with the wave. Now, if you see that what is happening, you see that the response xi a is equals to that amplitude of the exciting force divided by the linear restoring component. What is the meaning of that? Let me write the equation again. You can understand this. So you can the equation is m plus a x double dot plus b x dot plus c x is equal to f a e to the power i omega t. Now, so as omega tending to zero, what is assuming that that all the the radiation component a uh, the damping component B absolutely has no role in fact. So, that time the response is very simple it is simply the ratio between the restoring coefficient uh, I mean the, the, the amplitude of the exciting force divided by the restoring coefficient right. Now, this is a very important thing because you know for this particular situation you really do not need to calculate all these tedious that uh, that all the softwares you do not need to run all this software and simply from the physical point of view we can simply say ok. So, this is a low frequency region very low. So, we can assume that added mass damping uh, that should goes to 0. 
So, therefore, uh, only the dominating component is exciting force amplitude and the restoring term. Similarly, if you go to the other other part of this side, when actually that uh, uh, the omega tending to infinity, that very high frequency region, so that time also see the response is very small, right? And then actually from here you can see that in this equation, when omega because because if you if you uh, write this, if you write this. Uh, in terms of that x equal to e to the power minus i omega t, if you apply this right, what you get is minus omega square into m plus a into xi a plus r sorry minus i b omega into xi a plus c into xi a is equal to f a into e to the power minus e to the power just f a. Now, if you divide whole thing by omega square, so then what you have what is going to happen is that your m plus a is, is free of omega, but then it is xi a minus now b into uh, b i b xi a that should be divided by omega and then plus c is this divided by omega square equal to f a by omega square. Oh, sorry it is not 2 it is omega square sorry yeah. So, then what is happening in that situation you can see that in, in high frequency region your added must become very important not the restaurant. So, you can see that in, in that is that is the beauty of this like you can guess from this from the low frequency region that your restoring force become important and in the high frequency region your added must become very important. So, that is in vibration added must become very important for uh, floating structures, but intermediate region both added mass damping restoration all are very important right. And actually we are going to discuss those range only we are not discussing when omega tending to 0 we are not discussing when omega uh, tending to infinity we are going to discuss when omega neither in low frequency region, neither in high frequency region, intermediate region where all this radiation component and all other component is very important. Okay. Fair enough. Now, uh, now let us uh, let us now uh, go into that how experimentally actually we can calculate the, the added mass damping. Okay. So, it is uh, again a very simple uh, thing that suppose you have a. Uh, so, what is the radiation force or is nothing, but in calm water you are oscillating a body in some frequency right. And then some pressure field uh, generated around this body if you integrate the pressure field you will get the radiation force fine. So, then, but you have to oscillate here with some frequency omega and of course, with some frequency xi a. Now, uh, let us do that with respect to uh, as I said like um, uh, not using the complex number rather let us use it a uh, you know uh, uh, the cosine function. Okay. So, now let us assume that your the, the forcing function now uh, you know now so see you can do both like you can assume that your forcing function f is equal to some f a into you know uh, sin omega t and then you can assume your uh, the displacement x is f a into you know sin omega t and then with some phase epsilon, but we do opposite let us because that is more easier for me because the ultimate end result is same. So, we can assume my the forcing function f is equal to f a into sin omega t plus epsilon or delta whatever nothing. And then you can use that uh, that x equal to some xi a into you know sin omega t. Okay. Now, uh,
Now, uh, what I am going to do is I am going to substitute this into the equation of motion. Okay. When I do that, let us see what I am going to get. So, now remember like it is like your every time you need to remember this equation m plus a into x double dot plus b into x double dot plus c x equal to now in this case it is f a sin omega t plus delta I am going to do for the real number right. So, I just substitute over here. So, it is become minus omega square into m plus a into uh, xi a cos omega t uh, xi a sin omega t plus b into omega into xi a into sin omega t plus c into xi a into oh sorry it is cos sorry plus C A into xi A into sin omega t is equal to F A. Now, just break it sin omega t cos delta plus F A cos omega t into sin delta. Now, I am just uh, uh, you know accumulating the, the, the sin term and cos term right. So, if I do that here, I will get minus omega square m plus a this this I just try to sin omega t. So, plus c into sin omega t and also I just comp the, the cos omega t term which is plus b into omega into xi a into cos omega t right and then in the right hand side I can write this equals to f a now I just the sin omega t term. So, it is uh, cos delta multiplied by sin omega t plus and then second term is f a sin delta into cos omega t. Now, next as I said this is very easy. So, just compare the sin omega t term. So, we will get minus omega square into m plus a uh, plus c equals to uh, f a cos delta. And if you look the, the sin, sin uh, cos term so, this is b omega xi a oh, of course, the multiply by xi a b omega xi a is equal to uh, f a sin, sin delta. Now, you see from here you can write the expression for a because all other term is known to you, you know the mass m you know the the xi is the, the the harmonic the forcing function the displacement of the body like you know you are displacing it with 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 xi a right. So, this is known to you and then you know this force is known to you because that is what you are going to you are read it from the the, the machine you are putting uh, some pressure sensor to get the pressure and forces. So, this is known to you right and from here also you can get the damping right. So, b equal to f a sin delta divided by omega into xi a right. So, it is straightforward. So, to get the b. Now, from here actually this all this known to you and then only thing is need to do that what is the delta. Now, delta also very easy. Now, if you plot it uh, the signal getting from your machine this is the signal of your forcing function and if this is the signal of your uh, another uh, the, the resultant. So, then from here you can get the information about the delta right. So, so here from these two equation you can obtain what is your added mass and what is your damping. Okay?
So, today uh, we are going to stop here, thank you very much. So, we will going to see in the next class.